Welcome back, First Hour Faithfuls, to get another episode of the First Hour. This is the show where I, Colin Tanner from Video Games Are Dumb, and you, the legions of First Hour Faithfuls, take a look at the first hour of a recently released video game. So remember to like, subscribe, and bring the fire in the comments below for this episode, Kirby 64. The Crystal Shards on the Wii U Virtual Console. Nintendo has actually released three Kirby games in the same day. And uh, they are this one, Kirby Squeak Squad from the DS, and Return to Dreamland from the original Wii. That's now available on the Wii U uh, Virtual Console. Do you know how to use Kirby's copy ability? Yeah. I think I do. Now, when I heard that this title was being released, it was actually just yesterday. They just sort of sucker punched everyone with the announcement that there would be three Kirby titles being released on the Virtual Console for some sort of Kirby celebration. What reason? Who can really say? It's not really any sort of significant anniversary. Kirby and his first title came out in 1992 and April at that. So unless they're somehow celebrating the 24th and a half anniversary, actually 23rd and a half I'm not really sure why but I figured because this is gonna be the first video I'm gonna be doing today and the rest of them are all gonna be Kirby related I'm figured maybe it's time to explain maybe the importance of Kirby as a character and the studio that he came from Hell Laboratories look at that guy adorable ah uh, if you've never played Kirby before Kirby can fly Kirby can eat Kirby can swallow, and Kirby can spit. And he can also get other people's abilities. Let's get... Oop. Get rid of that ability. Get this one. Get the spiky attack. Spiky attack is always so good. Well, okay. So, Kirby is obviously produced from HAL Laboratories. And, well... Hell is probably the most significant developer Nintendo ever worked with, which might sound like a bold statement. It's not so much for the products they put out as it is the people that came from it. Uh, Hell was actually... Take that. Get that crystal. Now I got a combination of powers. <laughs> Creepy Kirby. So scary. Rawr. You can actually use two powers at once in this title, which was a new feature and one that I haven't actually seen reproduced in any other Kirby title. Great boss fight. Good job. So, Hal was started in the early to mid 1980s, and the reason it was called Hal apparently was because they wanted to be one step ahead of. IBM, the uh, computer uh, developer, the chip processor developer. Get it? IBM? H-A-L? Get it? Yes, apparently that was really the rationale behind it. And when they started off, they didn't have that many employees. If I'm not mistaken, they only had around less than 10, maybe 8 employees. One of them was Satoru Wada, who I'm sure you've all heard a lot about recently and is, uh, is an unfortunate passing away. But he was really fundamental to Hal in a number of ways, including the early days. Um, he actually worked on his first game with Hal, uh, which was Super Billiards, which was a sequel to a game they'd already released, uh, Billiards. Uh, and at that time, Hal was mostly a computer developer. Um, they had worked on things such as the Commodore uh, computer series, including the Commodore 64 and would later go on to develop games on the MSX. Um, I don't believe they worked on the MSX 2. I might be mistaken there. By the way, uh, I didn't really know they were going to be doing this whole Kirby thing until way later. Oh no, now you're evil. I gotta put a stop to that. It's actually rather terrifying to see this, this friend of Kirby lose his mind and his, I guess, humanity, for lack of a better word. I don't need your freaking star. I can use my chomp power. Even my air will hurt you. Oh god, <laughs> it's the suplex. <laughs> oh darn, I think if I swallowed him I got uh, the sumo power. I just missed out on that. So Hal primarily worked on computers uh, and developed a number of 
you know, sort of gambling-esque parlor games such as billiards and, and card games. And then, you know, there were rumblings about the, the brand new uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. I, what are we doing, Kirby? Oh, dang, it's that jump thing. I forgot about that. Oh, I'm sorry, Kirby. Don't cry. Kirby, don't cry. Got to keep your head up. Uh, <laughs> so, Hell heard about this, and Awada, who's a, a programmer at Hell, became very excited at the prospect of, of working on this, this new console. Um, Japan had had consoles in the past, they had actually embraced the Odyssey, the very first uh, video game console, a little more warmly than even the Western audiences. But consoles really weren't the, the way to play games yet. They... Mostly people enjoyed going to the arcade. And... So, for hell, the prospect of a brand new... Um, do I get the umbrella? Oh, I don't get the umbrella. The idea of a brand new console was really exciting, and Iwato actually was sort of competitive in how he thought he could program for the system. He actually thought he could do better than anybody else, which he proved. He proved he could he could actually program better than nearly anyone else on the NES. Um, in fact, he worked on Balloon Flight, or I'm sorry, Balloon Fight, uh, which was. Uh, an arcade and uh, console release, and he was so proficient at um, coding that he was actually able to improve upon the arcade version. His version was better than the Nintendo Versus series edition, which, in case you don't know, Nintendo Versus was when Nintendo would make arcade versions of their of their classic, uh, I guess not classic then, their contemporary titles. In fact, uh, Super Mario Brothers, the original Super Mario Brothers, not to be confused with Mario Brothers actually was, um, ooh, I like that power. I'm gonna get rid of this. Ooh, what, what if I combine them? So we got a bomb and an explosion. You know what that means? Light bulb, Kirby! <laughs> does that just kill him if I throw it? Yeah, it does. Oh, I just threw away that power. So, Hell began to develop for the, um, Nintendo Entertainment System, and... While they certainly had a number of good titles, they didn't really have an identity. You know, there'd be a period where they would just be developing ports of classic arcade games such as Defender and, and Centipede, and then they'd be moving on to their own series like Adventures of Lolo, which, how many people here even remember Adventures of Lolo? Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm sure some of you do. I wouldn't doubt it. I remember Adventures of Lolo. Come on down. Oh, I thought they jumped down at you. They had had some success developing on computers with their golf series. And so they kind of doubled down on that and continued to make golf games. Uh, even on the NES. Uh, but they they still, you know, they'd released Mother, which is known as Earthbound Beginnings here. Oh, I don't have any powers. This will be interesting. Um... And that did okay. People thought it was interesting. It was it was actually pretty cool that this this weird title that was actually uh, produced by this this popular copyright guy uh, was <laughs> was going to be like the brand new type of RPG. But still, Hell just didn't have an identity. They didn't have that one thing that separated them. And throughout the 80s, they just started to, you know, really decline to the point where they were possibly going to go bankrupt. It wasn't looking good for HAL. HAL Laboratories was actually in, 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 you know, in trouble. So, oh yeah, now he's gonna have the, is he gonna have the creepy eye? Ah, those are scary. So HAL Laboratories, um... They needed something that was going to be a little bit more contemporary, a little more risk averse, and so they decided to develop a title on the. Uh... Whoa! Spooky. Just eating all that paint. So they actually developed a game on the Game Boy, which was still relatively new. It had only been released in, in 1989. 
What is what? What was that? I know Japan likes to blur out stuff, so who knows what that's supposed to be? Uh oh! Now we got the real boss here. Crud! He's got to spit out some. Oh, I got you! Whoa! That takes off a lot of his home. Oh, it doesn't give me the ice power because it's paint. This is your boss fight, everybody. Challenging, eh? But that's actually kind of the point. Uh, one of Hell Laboratory's employees, uh, Masahiro Sakurai, really wanted to develop a game that could be easy to be played from anyone. Something that would actually teach people how to play games. And so instead of having these really elaborate platforming sequences that would, you know, have people falling down pits, he decided to create a character that could fly. And he also wanted to have a game that was very colorful, well not colorful, but he wanted a game that was very happy and kind of joyous and, you know, just kind of celebrated the player for success. And uh, that's when he created Kirby. Uh, and it's funny because Kirby was, you know, Hal obviously was involved in Nintendo. One of the things that uh, came out of this was um, Satoru Wada obviously programmed on it, but uh, I'm just I'm waiting for this thing. What is it? Where is he going for here? Anyway, <laughs> Sigeru Miyamoto, the uh, obviously the creator of Mario and Zelda, he took one look at it and he was like, "This is a really good idea," but there's only one issue. You're making this character pink. And it's just on the box art, too, because you gotta remember this on the Game Boy. He goes, You really need to make this guy yellow. Yellow is the way to go. And Sakurai was like, No, pink. But they kind of lamented. And if you look on the original cover of, of Kirby's Dreamland, he's kind of yellowish, kind of white. Um, and the game was like a real success. Yeah, see, now it, What the? Oh, Kirby, I'm sorry, buddy. Come on. You know I love you. What was cool about Kirby is that Kirby just kind of could fly around. He could eat creatures. He couldn't... He didn't have the power ability. He didn't have the ability to, like, uh, use powers from the enemies he killed. And, in fact, that was considered... You know, well, we'll get into that. But when they released Kirby's Dream Land, it was a real success for them. And it was a big surprise. Now, people weren't really sure. Double bomb. <laughs> Weapon of mass destruction, Kirby. In fact, when Kirby's Dreamland was released on the Game Boy in America, they had this whole campaign. It was this really weird campaign, all about how badass Kirby was. I think they even called him One Tough Cream Puff. You can find that commercial on YouTube, and I encourage that you do because it involves him, I think, eating an entire movie theater full of people. I might be getting that wrong, but. Definitely look that up. It's pretty ridiculous. So Kirby's Dreamland was a big success, and that was great because Hal was, like I said, uh, heading towards bankruptcy. Things weren't looking good for them. And at that point, uh, Satoru Wada, of course, the programmer, he actually took over as president of um, Hal Laboratories. Look at Kirby Dash. He's all squinted and stuff. So, with the success of Kirby, the idea was to immediately capitalize on it. And to do so, they were going to develop a game on the NES. Now, like I said, in 1992 they developed the original Kirby. Well, the NES is kind of long in the tooth at that point. The SNES was already out in Japan and America. But, given that there were more people that owned a uh, original Nintendo, it seemed like the right way to go. They would have more possibility of sales. So they developed uh, Kirby's Adventure on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it didn't sell as well as the Game Boy One, but it did. In but it did introduce a lot of conventions that we have for Kirby today. Uh, those include the ability to copy powers. So whenever he'd eat, eat a creature, he would get their powers. And at the time, you know, S Sakurai was considered kind of a, a, a madman. They're just like, "What? We're gonna make powers? What?" How many powers is this guy going to have? And I don't even remember the entire number. I think it's only like 20-something. It's nothing even that big. But at the time, it was it was a mammoth undertaking. Oh, son of a... You stole my power. 
So, <laughs> that game came out. It did pretty well. The critics really loved it. And I actually remember that was my first exposure to Kirby. I was there at, at Blockbuster uh, the day it came out. And I just it blew my mind. I was like, wow, what a game. Like, this was so much fun. And it didn't even occur to me how easy the title was. It was just... This is insane! You're, you're taking all these abilities and... Oh, buddy. Always looking out for me. Good looking. Just the idea of being able to have some powers that you could use on these other people. So it was still like a platformer, but it was a lot easier. And it was a lot more action-based in some ways. And there were these powers that you could only get occasionally, such as UFO. UFO is the coolest power ever. Kirby just turns into a UFO. And that's it. But it's amazing. I gotta get some more of these powers here. I'm gonna get rid of these guys, because I've already looked at those. I know that the most powerful one, I believe, is rock and electricity. Uh, I also love when Kirby turns into a fridge, if you combine ice and electricity. Will I be able to combine these powers? There's a guy coming up here. Nope, I guess there's not anybody up here. I just gotta... So Kirby's Dream Land, while not as big of a success as the prior title, was the obvious direction that uh, HAL Laboratories needed to go in. What is that? Oh, baby! Kirby's got a sword and he ain't taking no guff. Look out, everybody! So, Satoru Wada, being the president, um, decided that they were going to go full-fledged on Kirby. Kirby was the way to go. And it's funny, too, because when you hear the original stories of the development of Kirby, apparently... Oh, I screwed up. I was supposed to go over there. I got so excited about Kirby having a sword. They were... They couldn't afford... Like, because, right, keep in mind, they're going bankrupt, right? They couldn't afford a nice studio, so they just rented out, like, the cheapest apartment that they possibly could and just proceeded to fill it with computers and cigarette smoke. Just everybody smoking all the time in this little contained space, and they're all just like, yeah, we're gonna make a pink ball dance! <laughs> it's like the sketchiest place ever. Ah, uh, King DDD. The frenemy of Kirby, if you will. So they they obviously made things like Kirby's Dreamland and Kirby's, you know, Dreamland 2, which uh, personally I think Kirby's Dreamland 2 is probably the best Kirby game. Like all things considered, just based off of You can't even get close to me, son. What were you thinking? Can't even get close to me, son. See that? Flawless victory right there. Poor King DDD. He has no idea that an evil crystal is inside of him. I mean, obviously they went on to make something like Kirby's uh, Superstar, right? And it was like, wow, Kirby Superstar. This is really, this is awesome, you know, because he had all these different Kirby games and they had a storyline that included Meta Knight, who's this mysterious Kirby doppelganger who covers himself up with a mask. Obviously more powerful, uh, obviously more popular now thanks to Super Smash Brothers then. Alright. Yeah! No crying Kirby! Are you gonna dance? You're not gonna dance. That's one thing this game really misses out on is all the dancing. What are you gonna do? Oh god. You got nothing on me. I got a freaking sword. What are you gonna do? This is of course Wispy Woods, the Ever crying tree that, for whatever reason, just hasn't learned his lesson that Kirby don't take no guff. But you could say after Superstar, the mainline Kirby series kind of took a hit thanks to um, Kirby's Dream Land 3, which was on the Super Nintendo, which, while not a bad game in the slightest, I think it's actually quite fun, just really wasn't up to the 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 forward-thinking momentum of the Kirby series up until that point. Like, it's... It just doesn't have what makes Kirby so good. Uh, especially when you compare it to Dreamland 2, which had these amazing boss fights between, like, the sun and the moon. You fought the sun and the moon. It was incredible. Or something like Superstars, which was just jam-packed with different gameplay styles, including multiplayer and... and just these amazing adventures. So, Dreamland 3 kind of set it back. Of course, there were other games out there like Kirby's Avalanche, and uh, and I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but that amazing Kirby Golf game. 
Seriously. That is such a good game. Which is kind of funny, because it really falls in line with uh, Hell Lavatory's uh, uh, catalog by having this golf game. Don't cry. Don't cry. He doesn't even cry in this game. It's so weird. So many different things in this title. And by the Nintendo 64, Hell Laboratories didn't actually really do much with Kirby. They had released Kirby's Dreamland uh, 3, I believe, in 1995, so towards the tail end of the Super Nintendo. And then from there, they just sort of started working on projects that Nintendo would commission, including, uh, you know, this, the Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Snap titles. They would work on those. I do love the music on that screen. Why would I need any other power? I have this freaking flame sword. Well, you know what? For the sake of actually doing stuff in this game, I'm gonna make sure that I absorb some different powers. So what is flame spike? Did I already do flame spike? I can't remember. I love it! I love it! It's too good! That's too good! I totally forgot about this one! So when it was revealed that Kirby was going to have not one, but two titles on the 64, it was a big deal. You might be saying, two, two, two titles? I, What are you talking about? Now, I honestly cannot remember the name of the games off the top of my head right now, but of course... Oh God, what was it even called? There was the, um, the racing game that eventually came out on GameCube. Uh, that Kirby racing game. Something with a star... can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, which of course was never released on the Nintendo 64, much to my chagrin. But the other one was Kirby 64, uh, the Crystal Shards. Now this was a big deal because really the 64 hadn't had many 2D platformers. Which is funny considering uh, Nintendo's lineage. They had had things like Mischief Makers, but... A, but Nintendo's main franchises going 2D just didn't really happen. I guess the closest thing Nintendo had uh, eventually would be something such as, you know, Paper Mario. But that's more of an RPG. That's not really a, a platformer. So it was a big deal when this game was uh, revealed. Um, and, you know, I'm going to start transitioning into kind of my feelings on Kirby 64 because... I, I, I was a huge Kirby fan. I loved Kirby. I had played through uh, Kirby's adventure on NES multiple, multiple times. Like, an insane degree. And I'd also played, um, obviously, Kirby Dreamland 2, as well as uh, Superstars, and my personal favorite, you know, Kirby Dreamland 2, but also um, Dreamland 3. And so... I was extremely excited, got this game day of release, which 64 was really weird whenever it came to like new games. Like it was very hard to get a new 64 game for some reason. Like the release dates were always a little wonky. I think this game, if I'm not mistaken, came out on a Sunday? I believe it was a Sunday. Don't quote me on that. Uh, and I played it um, pretty much the day after it came out. And, I don't know. As far as Kirby titles go, it sort of underwhelmed me. I recognize now that there are a lot of people that grew up playing this game. And they love it. And good for them. Everybody's got their first. You know, I'm sure there are plenty of NES titles I grew up on that people that were more familiar with the Amiga were like, Jesus, this is just garbage, you know? Uh, but I don't think this game is garbage or anything. It's just not quite up to snuff when it comes to Kirby. And a lot of that has to do with the architecture of the Nintendo 64. Um, now the GameCube of course was limited, uh, but the NES and... God damn it. <laughs> the NES and the Super Nintendo were very good at creating fast action games. That's what they were designed to do. It was still trying to replicate the arcade experience in a lot of ways, um, which had fast processors, lots of color, and, uh, you know, arcade -y gameplay. Ooh, I didn't know Kirby could climb. Look at you, buddy, climbing up the wall. 
that door burst open? No, I guess not. Oh, it does. Because my buddies are here to save me. So, Kirby on 64, while it sounded like an amazing idea, perhaps making it a 2D platformer wasn't the wasn't the the best marriage of uh oh god I don't think you get very many of these I gotta do that I gotta get the fish oh dang I thought the fish actually had a power they tricked me oh crap sayonara sucker Ooh, electricity. Come and get me. Come and get me. I'm gonna get that ice cream bar. Ain't nothing you can do. Hmm. Better stick with it. I mean, for one, the issue is that the architecture of the 64 is designed for these really great 3D graphics. Damn. So it's when his hands are up, he's the shortest. Okay, alright. And by making this 2D title, you just it doesn't have the speed or even really the color of the previous 16-bit uh, Kirby titles. I mean, by having this kind of, you know, third quarter perspective... Oh god. Yeah, baby. We got it now. It's all over. No one can handle this. It's a homing rock. It just kills everything. And that's, obviously, like I've said, this is not to say that Kirby 64 is in any way a bad title. It's, 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 it's good. It's good. But it doesn't have a lot of the elements that made Kirby so much fun. Um, obviously, there's only really one gameplay type, which is the main story mode. And... It doesn't really have those cartoony graphics. As Kirby had gone on, it kind of looked more like a color drawing, you know, like like color pencils. And when it went to 3D, it just kind of looks a little a little lifeless. Even back then, this did not look great. Um and it's not really it's just it's not taking advantage of the Nintendo 64 hardware. Now, would Kirby work in 3D? I can't say. He's never been given the chance. Well, he, the franchise. I'm not sure. Kirby's been in 3D, I'm sure, in a number of places. But, you know, it's it's just kind of a bummer. You know, it, and for me, it just it never quite never quite clicked the way that uh, Dreamland 2 or Superstars did. Um, or even Superstar, or even uh, Dreamland 3. Um, Obviously, Hell Laboratories, I assume, just wanted to make this game. I don't know if Nintendo was really crying out for uh, another Kirby title, which they they always did well. They did well enough to to make uh, Hell Laboratories financially uh, secured. But you know, when they had the opportunity to be working on things like Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Stadium, I'm pretty sure Nintendo was a little bit more concerned about those titles than Kirby 64, unfortunately. But obviously, the reason these games... This is actually... This just looks beautiful right here. I love the, the, the shadow on Kirby right here. Can I hurt you? I cannot really hurt you. Also, this game is very short. It's incredibly short, which you might be saying... I get this comment a lot whenever I do these 64 games, where I'm just kind of chilling back and just kind of talking about the history of video games, because I really like the history of games. I get a lot of comments that are just like... Man, I beat this game in this many minutes. You're too slow. It's like, uh, these aren't speedruns, guys. I, I hate to break it to you. I'm not doing a speedrun. But what's so important about the Kirby series and HAL Laboratories, like I said, are the people that came out of it. Uh, Satoru Wada obviously had a big future ahead of him. Uh, but beforehand, him and uh, Masahiro Sakurai collaborated on the Kirby series. And also, you know... Iwata was the boss of HAL Laboratories, but he did code, and I believe he did some programming on this title as well, or at least some debugging. Um, 
But probably the most famous collaboration that uh, Sakurai and Iwata ever did was when, around this time, the late 90s, uh, they began developing a fighting game. Oh no, Kirby, you're dead! Well, now you know what the death animation looks like. Uh, it was, uh, whatever it was, Dragon, Ki Dragon King the Fighting Game, which, of course, later turned out to be titled Super Smash Brothers, after Awada kept encouraging uh, Nintendo to allow them to use Nintendo characters. Ugh, I hate this power-up. Alright. Ugh. Whatever. I'll get that yet. Yeah, I want the sword and the boomerang. I don't know what that is. Ugh, you jerk. Well, at least it can be spiky Kirby. That's all that matters to me, is being spiky Kirby. So it's funny, you know, I, I, I question if Kirby would have been in Super Smash Brothers if it wasn't developed by HAL. I wonder if it would have been a success had it not been developed by HAL, because it really took a genius like Awada and Sakurai to really reinvent the fighter. And you can't look at Super Smash Brothers without looking at Kirby. Um, not because he's in the game, but because it's really a return to the concepts that made Kirby so successful in the first place. It's where you're taking a game that is, or game style that is familiar, in this case, give me that fire sword. <laughs> yeah! Oh, dang, it's this thing. I thought I was getting the fire sword. I just want to see what regular old fire looks like. Oh, I already knew that. You know, bringing back the accessibility of a genre back to people. So in terms of fighting games, instead of all these complicated combos, it's just, you know, base gameplay. Press the button in any four directions, that's how you get your special moves. Oh, uh, King DDD. Helping out, putting in work. Alright, get this secret over here. Climb up that wall there. So obviously, Awada left Hell Laboratories to become, well, involved in in development and overseeing third parties. But he then became the president and CEO of Nintendo. I mean, pretty good for a guy that helped a pink ball dance in a smoky room. And that's kind of like the magic of this whole series, is that Sakurai would become synonymous with Super Smash Brothers. He's a... he's sort of a legendary figure in that respect. Yeah, you got that! Alright, everybody's happy. Here we go, yum yum yum. Now obviously I'm skipping over things like, um... The Amazing Mirror and Squeak Squad, but that's just because I'm going to be doing videos on uh, Squeak Squad and on Return to Dreamland on the Wii later today, so you'll see those. Those are going to be already up. And they should process pretty quickly on YouTube because honestly, you know, how complicated is it to process an old 64 game? I'll be amazed if this video is bigger than... Uh, I don't know. 700 megabytes. So yeah, that's basically the legacy of Hell Laboratories and Kirby and where it all came from. I hope that's... If I get any information wrong, just leave a comment below. Uh, and just uh, explain to possible viewers what's going on. What, what, what really happened. Whee. Oh man, I remember this fish. Bad news, fish. You gone, you dead. Down to the next fish. 
On to the next one. On to the next one. Of course, Kirby, you know, as a character, uh, it's very popular to this day. I always really, really loved Kirby. He was my favorite. You know, my favorite Pokemon was Jigglypuff. Uh, probably my favorite Nintendo character. Like, one that I really liked was Kirby. So, there's something kind of great when I played Super Smash Brothers, and it's like, we got Kirby and we got Jigglypuff. I'm like, oh my god! This is the best day ever! Stupid fish. Struggling fish. None of them- there's so much water, fish! Why can't you figure it out? I'm willing to bet there might be a secret up here. There is not. You know, I don't know if any of you guys watching have ever watched that show, Kirby, right back at ya. It's a animated series that starred Kirby and his friends. Um, for whatever reason, that show gets a really bad reputation from Kirby fans. People that even like Kirby say, oh, that show was crap. I, you know, I thought it was kind of adorable. I thought it was a fun little show. Like, was it must-see TV? Not really, but just watching Kirby having little adventures every week, I thought was, that's good enough for me, man. That's good enough for me. Whee. Let's get up to the sea. Ah, you son of a... I'll kill your whole family! I think one of the reasons people really like Kirby is that he is adorable. Oh, God. But he's also a little tough guy. Like, he, uh... <laughs> as cute as he might be, he does literally eat his enemies. <laughs> There's something kind of terrifying about that. Man, they gotta have this firepower. I don't know how I'd get past some of this right now without it. Is there a secret up there? Let's go see. Oh god. There is. Get it, Kirby. I'm sure I've missed a number of crystal shards already playing through this. Wow, okay. Uh, now let's practice this jump one more time. Oh, Kirby, I don't think you're going to get anything. Please don't be mad at me. Yeah, you got some steak! Kirby got steak. That's all that matters. Yeah, you can see right here how many of the crystal shards I've collected. So I've missed one here. I only got missed one there. And yeah. You also notice that each stage is based off of dice. This being the fourth stage, so it's fourth on dice. <laughs> Small, weird details. Come here. That's right. Get nice and close. Ah! Firework Kirby! I love it! It's adorable! It's so adorable! But I think if you're ever looking for a character, like, the best designed Nintendo character, I really, you know, people say Samus or, you know, Mario or whatever, but honestly, I think it really might be Kirby. Uh, you just instantly feel comfortable with this character. Look at his little smile. I mean, he's a little pudgy, and, uh, you know, he, he's obviously like a balloon. I mean, children can really get behind that. I think adults can really get behind that. He's just, he's a cool looking character. And then when you see him in action, he has all these amazing powers. It just, it makes sense. Kirby can do anything. And that's what makes him so cool. It's just like, yeah, he can use swords, or he can become fireworks, or he can turn into a light bulb. And none of this ever seems to betray the core character. It's all sort of expected that, well, of course Kirby can do all these things. It's like, there's no mythos to it. It's like, how did Kirby, what species is Kirby? Where did he get his powers? Like, I'm sure there's some really dreadful fan fiction on the matter. But people just sort of accept, oh yeah, of course, it's Kirby. He does these things. Why not? That's what Kirby's all about. I really, I gotta give credit right here. I don't remember these darker stages, 
but I really love the way Kirby looks in the shadow. I think that's really impressive for the 64. Uh, these are probably the best graphical sequences, I would say, in the game. <laughs> of course, also the sound effects play a huge role in these games. What? Aren't you gonna give me something? What is it? Huh, I guess not. So we got a tree, star, teardrop, moon. I bet those do something, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, if you want a plushie of one Nintendo character, who are you going to pick? Yoshi or Kirby? Don't even joke around. Don't even leave that joke in the comments. It's It's got to be Kirby. He's freaking adorable. Kirby's the best. And so while I might be not exactly singing the praises of Kirby 64, do not get me wrong. I am a Kirby fan. Hard freaking core. Now, for me, being hardcore in my fandom doesn't require me to have a bunch of t-shirts and plushies or anything like that. I just love the character. Like, through and through, I could play all the Kirby games back to back, and I would probably have a real good day. Because they're all relatively easy. I mean, obviously, I'm not really being challenged in this game, even though I kind of died a couple times here. Kind of had some deaths going on here. There we go. Oh, those are like electrical guys. Oh, crap. How dare you electrocute the great Kirby. I mean, Kirby is obviously not made out of rubber. He's not really a balloon. Otherwise, that wouldn't have hurt him. Yeah! Eat that McDonald's tomato! Whatever it's supposed to be. How much time do we have right now? He, he, it's just that Kirby doesn't really, as heroic as he is, he's just sort of a dork. Look at him, he's squinting his eyes when he's running, he's like, oh, I'm running so hard. That's just what makes him so lovable, you know? This is a pretty cool boss fight. For a 2D game to take advantage of 3D in some way, it really, this works out pretty well. Not actually sure how to attack these guys. Oh shit. Wow. I probably just have to survive that, right? And now, like, the real boss fight starts, right? Okay. Crud. Like I said, these games really aren't hard, so I just need to play a little bit more carefully. Uh huh. Now you're see through. That'll teach you. Yes. Mare. Oh, man. Mare. Little blue thing. Of course, Kirby also has amazing music. But I will say this much about 64. It, the things that it's missing for me are A, Kirby's dance. Kirby's got to divide up into three and do a little dance, which I'm sure was maybe a little too hardware intensive for them. I mean, that's not nearly as cool as Kirby busting the move. <laughs> oh yeah, Kirby's all tuckered out. <laughs> That's probably my favorite moment in this game. Right there. Just Kirby struggling. Well, shit, I hope he doesn't run out of paint. Ah. 
Ah, Kirby loves apples. I wonder if that's like his favorite food. I don't know if that's ever been officially said, but Kirby really loves apples. In fact, in the animated series, it's all about him loving apples a bit too much, which almost destroys the entire forest. And then King Dedede wants to play golf with his head. It's a very strange show. Oh man, Kirby's hurt in a bad way. Well, we do have exactly 15 minutes left, which is good, because I do want to get a little further with this. I don't really remember ever using these firework powers, so I'm using them a bunch, because they are awesome. These are super cool. Hey, look, the fish falling upon water! This is an awesome song, by the way. One of my favorites on the 64. So for whatever reason Nintendo is doing this whole thing, I'm perfectly happy with it because I just love Kirby. Even when I don't love the Kirby game as much as the others, I still love it. Like this one right here. But see, this is where it looks good. This is kind of like what I want to see more of. Just look at that shadow detail right there. Makes him look badass. Oh, I'm going to blow you up, sucker. <laughs> See, look at Kirby's struggle. He's not happy about it. He's like, no! I guess in that way, Kirby's almost kind of cat-like. Ooh. You know, he's... Get that crystal. He just sort of always seems to be not happy about if something else is touching him. That was something else that I really missed in this title, were, were Kirby's uh, animal friends, especially the owl. That owl loved picking him up with his claws, and you just see it in Kirby's face that he does not want to be held by that owl. Ugh! Keep getting hit. Well, that just looked like an indigenous person getting killed. Who knows what that was about? Yes. Was it Kirby's Dream Course? God, what was the racing game called? It's gonna bug me. But you know, Kirby, I guess, is going to be doing just fine. I mean, obviously they wouldn't be having this whole Kirby Day thing if there wasn't a future for the character. I don't think he've had anything with Kirby since Kirby's Dream Land. There hasn't even really been, there hasn't been a 3DS title yet, has there? That's crazy. That's actually pretty bonkers. Oh god. Jerks. Yeah, you, you can hide behind their smiling little faces. That's sort of a theme of Kirby's as well. These really adorable faces that turn into monstrous creatures sooner or later. That's right. Give me that. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised that I actually died once at all. It was because I was in the middle of that thing that closed on me. This firework power is pretty ridiculous. Alright, where is it? Can't go through this wall. Hmm. The sliding kick, the most underused move in all of Kirby. Which I don't think he even has in the other games. Could be wrong, I just never use it.
I'm not really sure what could have been done to improve this title. I The hardware, the way it was, just really couldn't make a fast-paced, you know, action platformer. That just really wasn't within the 64's capabilities. Yeah, Kirby got the one up! Even though, I'm not going to need those at all. This was also one of the only games I recall on the 64 that was pretty much controlled exclusively by the D-pad. Gimme, gimme, gimme. So this game and Kirby's Dream Land 3 are kind of the dark ages of Kirby in some ways. <laughs> if you can even say that. I guess some people say like, oh wow, the Kirby 64, I can't wait. I, I was shocked to, to read that, but I guess a lot of those people were probably, you know, maybe in their late teens, early 20s by this point and have maybe a stronger fondness for this Kirby title. But they would fix a lot of the issues when they would release things like The Amazing Mirror. Um, God, no, what am I talking about? There, there was a recent Kirby title. It was Kirby... Um, Rainbow Curse, but that was on the on the Wii U, which I honestly think it should have been on the 3DS. I have no idea why the hell they even released that on the Wii U. You literally couldn't look at the TV screen because you'd be too busy drawing Kirby on the... whatever. Neither here nor there. But there was obviously Canvas Curse on the DS, which is another great title. Um, Canvas Curse, I think, is the better of those two. And that's like a whole another subgenre of Kirby. It's just funny. Canvas Curse is one of those titles that I think really showed people what the the DS could do. Because it was so wildly different to anything you'd played before. Gimme it. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme, 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 gimme. How do we get in there? Am I supposed to? No way. I'm not going anywhere. I want to get inside there. Do I got to go above? No, that wouldn't make any sense. Huh. Oh! Just keep going. Unless... Hey! A sandwich! I guess this was an all for nothing if it doesn't work out. Ah! I really want that crystal. I don't mind missing crystals, but if I know they're there and I don't get them, that, that really chaps me. Hmm. How long can Kirby balance on there? He just keeps going. I love it. Keeps going. Keeps going. <laughs> I like how they're both scared. They're like, ah! Yay! Got the crystal! There is something about this, though, where they have to put the, uh... The exclamation points. Just because it might not be obvious as the... As the perspective shifts. If you're close to, or... Not close to hitting something. Ah, uh, I just love watching them wave his little hands around. Oh, God! Well, I know Kirby can fly. I hope other dude's okay. Give me the candy. I don't care if it does nothing for me. I want the candy. Oh, yeah. Man, tons of crystals in this stage. Well, I guess that there's only three. But I didn't get them all. 
Because that stupid... Oh, give me that. Sorry, Mr. Pig. Warthog, whatever. Oh, look at the backgrounds. It's so pixelated. So less, low resolution there. But it, you know, it kind of looks cooler now because it's so bizarre. Seriously though, this is some of the best music on the Nintendo 64, which unfortunately isn't saying much, but I just I love this soundtrack, even though it's a lot of remakes early on. Yeah, it all worked out. Huh, okay, well, I think that's going to have to do it for this episode of the first hour. It's been more than a few years since I played uh, Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards. And coming back to it today has been interesting. It's kind of funny. I don't think I, I don't think I've played it since the original Nintendo 64. Hmm. Do I recommend Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards? Well, we've got two other games to get through today. We've got Squeak Squad that comes from the DS and we've got Return to Dreamland. Squeak Squad is $10, this is $10, and Return Dreamland is uh, 20 And, uh, you know... Uh, I still don't think this is top-tier Kirby. I think this is actually on, on the bottom end of Kirby. But that's not to say it's bad, because there aren't any bad Kirby games. There's no such thing as a bad Kirby game, even though I didn't like that, uh, whatever the hell, that claymation... Uh, canvas, rainbow canvas, rainbow curse, whatever it was called on the on the Wii U. Um, if you're a hardcore Kirby fan, you should experience this. It's just it's got those unique elements, such as uh, the combination of powers, and it does have some great music. Uh, I do like the way that some of the backgrounds work, uh, and there's those nice little sequences like you saw that you're in the river raft or when you're on King DDD's back. But for me, it never quite. The level design never really takes advantage of the 64's capabilities. This really does feel like a game that could have simply been made on the Super Nintendo and would have probably been more successful on the Super Nintendo, would have been faster on the Super Nintendo, would have looked, would have aged better on the uh, Super Nintendo. But obviously, they were focused on the 64. Did they make the most of the situation? No. Did they make the most of releasing a 2D Kirby game on a 64? Probably, but like I said, the hardware was never right for 2D games. It really wasn't. And while I'll have to go and check out uh, Return to Dreamland and Squeak Squad, and you can, you can hear my opinions on that video, which they won't be getting in any, any of the history of the games. They will just be um, just straight playthroughs. Um, I, I still think that there are... You, you might have more fun playing the NES game. At least I would. Uh, this game's just a bit too slow uh, for me to recommend. Oh, it never feels good. Even to this day. But like I said, not a bad game if you're just like, ah, who cares? I want to just play some Kirby. And I want it to be on the... You know, I want it to be like, this looks fun enough for me. Then go for it, you know? But uh, me personally, still not... Still not great. <laughs> oh man, I don't like saying anything bad about Kirby. But that's going to do it for this episode of the First Star. Remember to like, subscribe, share, bring the fire in the comments below. Did you like Kirby 64 when he came out? Where does it place for your favorite Kirby games of all time? Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I will see you for the next episode of the First Hour. Thank you for watching. <laughs>